Okay. How will we do it now? Can everybody hear me? Just say yes in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk. Uh, it, so this is OpenAI. It's a chat GTP. And I'm, I want to let you know that AI has been with us, especially in the workforce arena, since the early 90s. Um, so this is now the latest iteration with ChatGTP, and it's at the forefront. Why? Because it's easier to use. Um, the advantages of using ChatGTP for resume prep include saving time, not really. Improved efficiency, no, not really either. Enhanced accuracy, no. And leveraging AI capabilities, yes. So not bad, one out of five. So, however, the disadvantages of using ChatGTP include inputting the right prompts. And a prompt is a question. Understanding ChatGTP limitations, which there are a lot, and then making sure you review the final data, all right? Um, I had a young lady reach out to me and she said, Frank, I wrote my resume using ChatGTP. And I said, okay, great, send it to me. Let me take a look at it. So she sent it to me. At the end of every prompt that you get, there's a little disclaimer. Make sure you check this information. Well, all of those little prompts were still on her resume. So again, you need to check and make sure the final data is correct. So the first thing we need to talk about chat GTP is never input any personal identifiable information. All right, PII. Why? Because all of these large language models are open source software program with no expectation of privacy. So you upload your resume and it's got your name and your address and your telephone number, your credit card number. I'm just kidding. But what it's doing is somebody is reading this information that you're putting in. And you really don't want to share that personal information. Understand the importance of collecting relevant data. And that's going to be the key to your success. If you want to move forward with a resume development, you have to understand that you need a lot of data. Number one, you need to have your resume already built in some form or fashion. Number two, um, you have to have the job description. And number three, you have to train chat GTP. All right. Most people think, well, all I have to do is this, and it's going to give me those wonderful story. And that's not the case. You must gather a diverse amount of information and a representative data because it learns from what you put in. So if you were to open chat GTP today, it knows nothing about you doesn't have any history, it doesn't have anything, so you're going to have to start from square one to move forward with this process. The key to considerations in preparing the resume is really simple. You must make sure that the job description and the resume that you're going to feed this is in a clear, concise, easy to read format. So if your resume has all of these lines in it, multiple bullet points, or worse, it's in a PDF format, ChatGTP won't parse it very well. It's not going to work for you. So what I do is literally I take all the data and I strip it down to a text file, to EXT file. That's what I load into ChatGTP. All right, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. ChatGTP has a 3,000 word limit per chat, okay? Now, there's absolutely no way for you to figure out how this works. One day you may sit on ChatGTP all day long, and the next day you get there and it says, oh, you can't log back in until eight o'clock tonight. No rhyme or reason, all right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, each prompt or question has about a 500 word limit. Right? So if you're going to put in a long, uh, diverse uh, uh, question, you need to make sure that you're under that limit. 
Currently, there's about 5,000 AI variants that have come out within the last year alone. Now, majority of these are uh, photo generators, and I have like three of them, and yes, you can make all these wonderful photos, and you ask the right questions, and you put in the right syntax and all these things. Um, I turned all my little kids into anime people, and they were like, oh, look, this is so cool. Can you do this for our friends? And I said, yeah, clean the kitchen, come back, and then I'll do it. So, chat GPT can be used to review resumes. One of the things about AI, it is great at summarizing information. Okay. So you can use it, hey, here's my resume. Tell me what I did right and tell me what I did wrong. No, don't do that, but you could. Okay. And it will analyze your skills, experience, and qualifications. Can ChatGTP be used to develop a resume from scratch? No. Well, maybe. Yes, but it requires a complete understanding of how to build a resume from the ground up. All right, so if you're not versed on resume development, this might be a problem for you. Plus, you have to consider the limitations of ChatGTP. Currently, if I were to build Paul's resume from scratch, I have 70 questions that I need to ask. And actually, it depends because since he's a reference librarian, it's probably going to be well north of 70 questions. All right, so in order for me to do this, it's a drawn out process. Now, can you do it? Absolutely. Will it work? Absolutely, maybe. So I'm a certified resume writer. What does that mean? I, I don't know. But here's the thing. What I did is I took my original resume and I updated it, not using AI. And then I took a resume that I developed using AI and I sent it to 30 recruiters across the nation and actually one in Ireland too, because she's a great friend of mine. I did not tell them who was getting an AI developed and who was getting my original resume. And I asked them three questions. One, yes or no, was this developed by AI? Two, oh, that's for me, I'm not here. Two, that's okay. Two, could have this been possibly developed by AI? And three, nope, this was developed, you did this on your own. And so what happened is I got all the responses back and none of the recruiters said this was developed by AI. A majority of them said maybe. Okay. And actually more said maybe on my original resume than the AI resume. So can it be done? Absolutely. If you know how. Chat GTP can assist in analyzing job descriptions, identifying essential skills, and remember the word count limits. So I uploaded a, a, a job description from a large company here in St. Louis, which was six pages long. I ended, having, I ended up having to go in and call some of the information because it was too long for chat GTP. I exceeded the word limit. Typically, the last eighth of a job description is the EOC, location, contact, blah, 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 blah. Just delete that if you're going to use this as a summarization tool. Okay? Now, the interwebs have concerns about chat GTP. I get all of this from no, really recruiters, but hiring managers from all over the metro area. They think by using an AI product to write your resume, you lose authenticity. Unfortunately, they don't know how the system works, how much effort you have to put in it, 
But when I first got certified as a resume writer, I got the same feedback. Oh, if you're paying, if somebody's paying you for a resume, that's cheating. And I just heard this the other day from a hiring manager. You know, how people using AI, that's cheating. They should not be able to do that. All right, accuracy. AI can sometimes generate incorrect or hallucinate content. Because if you don't put in the right prompt or you don't provide it enough information, what ends up happening is it'll make it up for you. Now, is that a good thing? Probably not. Okay, so this could result in uh, false information on unfounded claims about your resume. Effort, and again, we have some people that says, oh, that's cheating, you know, you shouldn't be able to do that, and I will be able to tell. I get that all the time. I say, oh, okay. Can I include you in my resume surveys? Ethics, using AI to exaggerate accomplishments or generate public fabricated content to improve one resume could be seen as unethical. So how would they know? So if you're gonna exaggerate on your resume, this isn't going to stop it from doing that. All right. So it's just about you. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. A couple of years ago, I started in this AI world and I started looking at how I can help you. All right. Not me, but you. Well, actually, me too. But you as an individual, how can I help move you forward in your job search strategy? So what I did is I wrote my own AI program. And I first started out with a program called Dolly. Uh, and uh, I used it and it was really well written and it worked extremely well, except its knowledge base was from 2020. So I could not give it enough information to understand today's world. So then I moved to Jarvis. I used the API recreated my AI program and with Jarvis, I'm, I'm sorry, Jasper, Jasper is actually a marketing AI. So if you're in marketing, I would recommend that you take a look at Jasper. Whenever I'm writing a social media post or like a LinkedIn post or something like that, I use um, Jasper to help me write because it's great at marketing. Uh, and then ChatGTP came out. So I started using ChatGTP, but keep in mind, ChatGTP's knowledge base is from September of 2021. All right, so now where are we at? So the latest program that's out there is called Anthropic. And so I migrated everything into Anthropic. And I found that it's working a whole lot better. But again, you have to train it. So I don't use this software to write a resume. What I use the software to do is to train you. And I know that sounds pretty bad, but it's not. I have been in the resume development process for 30 years. And the biggest problem I see is you, as a job seeker, don't understand how to market yourself. All right, so here's the biggest problem that we have. In today's world, post-COVID, you have to apply for a job online, correct? All right, have you ever applied for a job online and got no feedback? Included that funny little email that says, thank you very much, no one will ever call you. What we found is that your resume ranked you so low in the overall scheme, you were never presented to anybody. So what I wanna do is show you how to use an AI. Now again, you have to learn this. And you have to build your personal database to make it work. All right, the first thing that I do is I ask you to send me your resume and a job that you've applied for. 
Because first of all, I want to know what you are telling an employer. And what I'll do is I'm going to summarize the job description. Why? Most job descriptions are broken down into three sections. The about section, the company information. We are a Fortune 500 company, blah, 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 blah. How many read it? Yep, just keep your hands down because we know you don't. And the second part of the job description is the day-to-day. -day. You're going to do this, and you're going to do that, and you're going to do this. How many of you pay attention? You don't. The last piece of the puzzle is what you need to apply. But I can tell you right now, if you eliminate those first two sections, you've just lost a third of the job requirements. Okay? So let's summarize this as if you were a 10th grader. Now, I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but the average person with a college degree reads and comprehends at the 10th grade level. And I can prove that. I went out there waiting for Paul, and I was reading Mad Magazine. 10th grade level, and I worked. I loved it. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the program to provide me a list of keywords from that job description. Why? Because the number one way to get your resume moved forward is that you have the keywords that that employer is looking for. Not your words, the employer's words. So now we've accomplished two things. We've summarized the job description and we've provided you a list of keywords. Now, I want to know where to put those keywords on my resume, and I'm sure you all do too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt my AI to categorize the keywords. So it tells me this keyword doesn't go here, but it says, oh, these are the critical skills. These are soft skills. These are skills that are nice to have. So now I know where to embed my keywords, all right? The next thing that I want to do is I want to compare your resume to the job description. And by doing that, what I would love to do, or what I'm asking my system to do, is to tell me what you did wrong and what you did right how well you match to the job description, and how well you don't. Okay. The next item is a list of jobs. Most people that I talk to, I'll say, well, what kind of work are you looking for? And they'll go, well, I used to be here at this company, and this is what I did. I said, well, is there anything else? No, I want to go, I want that job because I'm familiar with it, I'm comfortable with it, that's what I want to do. But what I'll do is evaluate your resume and come up with a list of 10 potential other jobs. Why? You know what? I have eight versions of my resume. One is a software developer, one is a trainer, facilitator, one is an HR manager, one is a recruiter, blah, 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 blah. We all have hidden talents that we can utilize in other opportunities. Matter of fact, I just got an email from a young lady who landed. I did this for her, and one of those 10 jobs, she goes, I've always wanted to do that, but I didn't think I could. She rebuilt her resume, applied, got an interview, and she starts my we need to start thinking outside the box. The next thing that I want to do is I call it a means test. I'm going to give you a table with three columns. The first column is the critical skills that employer is looking for that you're missing. The third column is its rank, one being the lowest and 10 being the most critical. Now, people ask me all the time, Frank, why don't you flip that around and make number one most critical and 10 the least? 
I haven't figured out the Python code to do that. And once I do, I may change it, but right now it works. Okay. And then in the middle is information. And that information are resources that you can utilize to grab that experience. I recently did this. St. Louis County Library came up with one of the biggest resources. Out of the 10 critical elements, we found this person could get eight of the 10 by coming through the library. Okay. Questions so far? Oh, good, let's get continue. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that you understand that during the interview process, somebody's going to ask you questions about you and about the job. Okay. So what I do is I produce 10 questions that employers could ask. Now, there's a cabillion to one chance that they would ask, but what I'm wanting you to do is to think about how I would answer these questions. And I've just did some mock interviews with some uh, college students the other day, and I provided them a list of questions based on the job they wanted to be when they grow up. And I said, okay, you got a week, study, answer. I brought 10 kids in or young adults in, <laughs> kids, they're kids. Uh, young adults in, and what I did is I asked them one question from their list. None of them could answer it appropriately. Now, one thing that I love to do with this that you don't see is I get the answers. I'm not giving them to you. Well, I guess I could. Let's take a vote. Who would want the answers? Nobody raised their hand. Okay, good. That means I don't have to work that hard. All right. So there we have it. Instead of writing your resume, let's take your existing resume and a job that you would like to do and let's make sure that you have the critical skills necessary to apply for the job not do the job but apply why it's really simple you have to get through the bot the robot of the online application process the ats in order to get to somebody to look at your resume. And that's my job, hopefully, to get you through this process. Jarvis, that's the name of my program. And so ChatGTP, again, has limited knowledge. You can see this is the free version. Uh, ChatGTP may produce inaccurate information about people, places, and facts. Why, again, the latest iteration is from September 2021. All right, versus Jarvis, which I've done is I pulled in the federal information, and I pulled in my work information, and I pulled in 190 resumes so far, and thousands of job descriptions. I've developed over 250 prompts to help you help yourself. People ask me all the time, hey, Frank, will you write my resume? No, you can't afford me. I can write one resume for you. That will be great for one job, but write a check for 500. We'll be able to apply for another job using that? I don't know because I'm only designing one resume for one job. But if I can teach you how to write a resume utilizing the tools at hand, then you don't have to pay me $500. You can do it on your own accord. Now again, today I'm using Anthropic versus OpenAI, and hopefully I'm gonna be moving towards a, um, a more vibrant software that's coming out after the first of the year. Uh, that'll give us even more analytical tools. Okay, questions? Frank, we have a question from uh, Katrina Campbell. She's asking, is Jarvis free? If not, what's the cost? 
So Jarvis cost me about 6,000 a year for me to run it. So is it free? No. The other thing is it's an, on an, it's an enclosed system. Like today, in order for uh, Paul and I to come online, we had to go through the library system and you have to be a, a reference librarian in order to do that. Okay, so with my system, it's an enclosed system. It's sitting on a Mac mini, four terabytes of storage, you know, and I use it only to pull the API, uh, to ping the API and make sure everything else is stored. All the need is stored. Okay. But, and this is, we couldn't get my other system to come up, but let me tell you really quickly here. I am still looking for volunteers. So what I would love for you to do, so Patricia, correct? That was her name? Uh, Patrina. Patrina. So everybody, I'm going to invite you to do this. Send me your resume and send me a copy of a job that you've recently applied for. Now, if you customize your resume, all right, to that job, that's what I would prefer. If possible, um, send it to me in a word format. That way when I convert it to text, it's a whole lot easier. If you send it as a PDF, then I have to fix it. In the subject line of your email, put Thornhill Library. All right, I get probably 50 of those requests a week, and I can only do so many. So as a one-time good deal, Thornhill Library, and my email address is F Alaniz, F-A-L-A-N-I-Z. It's on my card, I've given you my card, or for those who are in attendance, at Gmail. So again, F Alaniz, F A L A N I Z Z at gmail.com. So if you can get it to me over the next week, it takes me. Now I'm going to tell you a little secret. I used to do this in the olden days, and it would take me to three to four weeks to do one person. Right now, it takes me about three hours at the long end, and about an hour 45 on the short end, all right? And what I will do is I will give you all the information we just talked about, all right? I had a senior HR partner uh, about two months ago who sent me her information, and she said, Frank, I am the best qualified person for this job. And I ran my numbers. And she wasn't. The only thing she matched on that job was her job title, senior HR business partner. So she had 15 no show, no goes, and one you matched. All right? Are we having fun? Say yes. Yes. Okay. Right, All got right. A couple more questions. Yes, again. absolutely. Uh, Angel Keys is asking. What is the difference between Jarvis and Anthropic? Okay. Anthropic is the backbone. It's the actual business end of Jarvis. Now, Jarvis is not out there. You can't go in. Well, you can go in and Google Jarvis, and you're going to get Iron Man. Okay. You're not going to see my program. Again, it's behind closed doors, per se. Uh, Anthropic is the API. Basically, it's the software that I'm running to manage this program. Okay. Now, Anthropic is the latest uh, version, but it's got worse limitations than ChatGTP. All right. So, unless you want to pay $20 a month, which you'll get a million tokens, uh, which is why. 450,000 words per month that you get there, but it's 20 bucks a month. It's up to you. Questions? Uh, another one from Jen. She's saying, 
Do cover letters help increase your rankings when asked to upload documents with online applications? Absolutely. If you're not submitting a cover letter with your resume, again, these bots are looking for keywords. In other words, the employer goes into their application system and they type in words to match people for the job, keywords. And a cover letter added to your resume will add to your keyword count. The number one thing, it's really simple, the number one thing that you need to do is to replicate those keywords a minimum of three times resume cover letter. How many of you all are coming to my resume class? Okay, you all need to be raising your hand. Okay. And what I'll do is I will teach you how to resume, develop a resume to get through the online application process. Okay? So let's go live. Let's see if this works. Woohoo, it's working. Can you see me, Paul? Uh, no, I'm still seeing the link on the screen. Uh, share this tab instead. Uh, how's that? There we go. Okay, great. And someone's asking, when is the next resume class? I will, if you send me an email with your resume stuff on it, I will send you the link to the next class. Okay? <clears throat> so let's ask ChatGTP to write us a resume, okay? Uh, write, I wish my fingers could type. Write a resume for a project manager. Let's see what it says. Pretty quick, I was really concerned about this because depending upon the hour of the day, this thing really slows down. Okay, let's see what it gave us. So, first of all, you know it takes five data elements for me to steal your identity, right? Just think it does. Number one is your name, which goes on your resume. But the number two thing that's on your resume that you need to remove is your home address. It's no longer required, all right? Email address, your phone number, make sure that it's a cell phone. I know most of us have cell phones versus home phone but please don't put a home phone on your resume. The first problem that we see here besides the address is an objective statement. We have online applications that will reject your resume for having an objective statement. No objective statements. And then here's my project manager. Oh, look, I led cross-functional teams because there's not enough information, I didn't give it any reference, it made this up. Okay, so here's assistant project manager, a project coordinator. Oh, look, I even have a bachelor's degree. I, that's pretty cool. Here's the other problem, year of graduation. That needs to be removed. In today's world of ageism, take it off. All right, then we have our certs, project management, PMP, any other relevant certifications, here's my skills, my professional memberships, and then the worst thing that you can put on your resume is references available on request. You need to have a separate page with your references. Okay, so in this quick overview, what we have here is an address, incorrect, objective statement, incorrect, made up information, I'm gonna say that's incorrect, I didn't feed it enough, and references. So what does that mean? Can you do this? But no, 
I wouldn't unless you give it the right contextual data. So let's take a quick look. Example. Now, please don't use these props that you might or may not see on here because they work, but they don't. So here's a job description. And what I did is I summarized this job description. So what you'll do, you'll work here, you'll do that, what's important, skills you need, your responsibilities, the qualifications, and a very easy to read format. That's why I like these AI programs, because they summarize extremely well. So what I like at the end, in a nutshell, this job is about teaching KDOT, Kansas uh, Department of Transportation employees how to use computers better, helping them grow in their jobs and being helpful and energetic team members. Write synopsis. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask ChatGDP to give me keywords. Here's my list of keywords. Now, is this all encompassing? Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking if we take a look at this, if I were to do this manual, manually, I get about 85% of the keywords. So far, this is giving me 80 to 85% of the keywords as well. Well within the margin of error. Then what I'm gonna do is I say, let's classify those keywords or group them. So job and role, two, responsibilities. So where do those responsibilities go? Summary, experience. Skills and qualities, skill section, experience. What I like at the end, personal qualities. Where does that go? Cover letter. Yes, ma'am. Those categories are uh, chat GPT generated. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the headings. The headings, yes. Yeah. Next thing I do is I've added a resume. And it gives me the positive aspects, alignment with the job, strong educational background, experience. So I use my resume. Um, veteran experience, I honor one, and awards and recognitions. However, relevance and training uh, or tailoring. In other words, my, can everybody mute, mute their computers, please? All right. Um, my resume was not tailored to the job description. And that's the first thing he said. All right, number two, qualifying, uh, uh, quantifiable achievements. Achievement. In other words, I did not put out there a 25% increase here, 10% increase there, whatever. So none of my bullet points were quantified. All right. Uh, certifications, it says MS Teams should be highlighted. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. I could have put that, and that would have taken care of that. But that resume was used for a project management position. Um, keywords, the resume should incorporate keywords, um, which the employer uses, not which I use. And then chronological. Um, so my resume is kind of all over the place because of the project management experience, um, and there's why it's telling me that. In summary, while this resume shows promise, it's not going to make it through the ATS for this job. Okay. Then I ask it, okay, here, what other jobs can I do? Training coordinator, career counselor, program manager or course development, uh, veterans outreach, blah, 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 blah. Based on my resume, oh, and by the way, I have done every one of those jobs in one form or fashion or another. And then let's create a table. Teaching Microsoft, so here's my experience, that's what the employer wants. 
It's a rated 10, so it's a critical skill. Improvement, so it's telling me take online classes on Microsoft software, and where can I get those classes? St. Louis County Library. And again, teaching crystal reports, I'm certified as a, again, an MCT trainer. And so I have all of this, but I just didn't include it because the company I was applying for originally did not require these. All right, curriculum development, facilitation, effective communication, leadership principles. So it's giving me a wealth of information. All right, why you're not gonna get the job, Frank. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate 10 questions. And those questions are gonna help you in your interview process. The three hardest things for us to do as a job seeker, number one, create a resume. Number two, get through the bot, the application process. And number three, interview. And if you can help alleviate some of the stress on those three items, then you're going to be 90% ahead of everyone else applying for a job. So we have about eight minutes left. I know I went through this information really quickly. So let me, oh, let me stop sharing. Close Chrome. Did I? And again, what I want to reiterate to you all, if you would like me to do the same process with your resume, email me, F. Alan East, A-L-A-N-I-Z, at Gmail. And I will be more than happy to do this. Remember, put Thornhill in the subject line, so I'll set up a filter, and you'll move to the top. Okay, question. We have any questions online? We do, but I'll let this gentleman go first if you like. Yes. <clears throat> so um, before you asked all these prompts, did you upload your resume in there and then ask for those prompts? No, what I did in the initial process of building this out, I invited a lot of people just like you to send me their resume and a job. What I did is I went to, um, um, to a federal website, careeronestop.org, and I pulled job descriptions down for the most common jobs in the metro area. Uh, and I loaded those into my database. Now, in order for me to do this, the first thing I do is I upload your job description. So whatever you send me, that goes in first because I need to teach it what to look for. I need to teach my Jarvis, what you're interested in. What do you want to be when you grow up? And that's when we do the summary and that's when we pull the keywords. Then I take your resume again. I try and remove all PII, so no name, address, telephone number, emails. I go through the resume and remove all of that. All right, then I take that and I upload it to Jarvis. And that's where we get the rest. We get the comparisons, all right? But you have to tell it what to look for. That's the job description. Then you show it your resume because it has to have something to compare. Okay, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So my understanding is that you are building Jarvis, the database with Jarvis, and then how does the interface go with ChatGPT? Or is that I don't. I used to use ChatGPT, but it hallucinated too much. Okay. Okay. But we, I thought we saw ChatGPT. 
that's what I did. I use that as an example okay. because I can't get to my system from here. Okay. So you don't use chat GPT, you just used it for this class. Too. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's why I said those prompts, if you see the prompts, you probably have a 40% chance that they're actually going to work. I spent a week uploading data to my copy of chat GTP, jobs, resumes, and all kinds of things to train it to do this class tonight. Okay. Now you're more than welcome to do the same thing. It'll take you probably 30 to 50 job descriptions and probably 25 or so resumes to get the kind of answers that I got. Okay. Questions? Got a question online from uh, Patrina Campbell asking, what about a professional summary statement? So can ChatGTP write one? Yes, but it's going to be hilarious, mm -hmm. right? Can Jarvis write one? Absolutely. And if you need one, I'm going to have to sell it to you. I love chocolate chip cookies with macadamia nuts, so I can be bribed. I'm just kidding. That's just a. I did a program in Kansas City, and there was a nonprofit, and they said, Frank, we don't have a whole lot of money. I said, Well, how many people are coming? And they said, Oh, only about 15. And I said, Hmm. Well, that'll be a dozen homemade chocolate chip cookies with macadamia nuts. And the young lady was on the phone. She goes, I'm a baker. I own a bakery. I will have those for you. A couple of weeks later, she said, Frank, can we add five more people? Oh, that's three more cookies. So by the time I showed up three months later, they had a paper box full of cookies. Homemade, store-bought, Girl Scout, all kinds of cookies for me. And 125 people in the room. So I use it as a joke. Please don't send me cookies. But if you need help writing a, an effective summary, when you send me your resume, let me know. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I am not going to hold back. I'm pretty frank in my outcomes and my uh, analytics to you. So please don't think that I'm picking on you because I'm not. All right. So just understand, I will do my best to make sure you understand not what you're lacking, Nine times out of ten, you're just using the wrong words. Okay. Any other questions? Got a few. Okay. Um, Jen is asking, uh, what prompt did you use to have it summarize the job description and give you keywords? So the prompt that I use is I wrote uh, probably earlier this year. And again, I wrote it specifically for my program. Uh, I've been asked to do one of these and do the prompts for you. Uh, and so I think hopefully uh, Paul and I are negotiating another event. And if we can get one, I think what we should do is forget all of the PowerPoint stuff, right? Just say yes, because I get PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And then let's do prompts. I will make sure the prompts work in ChatGTP. And we'll record it, hopefully, like we are tonight. And what will happen is, is you will have the prompts so you can do these yourself. How's that sound? Sound good? Yes. Great. And everybody here throwing stuff at me, like quarters. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. So question on uh, chat GPT versus uh, Bar, Google yep. Bar, which is becoming more and more robust. What are right. your thoughts on something like that? So I, I used you, Google Bard because it's an integrated, I'm a Google person. Uh, so it's an integrated in everything I do in Google and Google, you know. Uh, um, so um, is it better? No. Is it worse? No. What the biggest problem is, is with uh, Google Bard is that it's pulling from so much Google data that it gets lost. Now, Google is coming out pretty soon with a multimodal version of BARD 
that is supposed to exceed chat GTP4. All right, and so I'm waiting and I'll evaluate that if it works, this isn't, well, it is for me because it helps me help you. But if it will work better than Anthropic, then I'll convert my API again. Anthropic is hugely expensive for me because it costs me about two grand to do chat GTP and it's going to run me by the end of the year about 6,000 for Anthropic. Any other questions? Not a question, but a comment. Uh, Ken Eckert wanted to pay you a sincere compliment. He says, Frank Allies looks a lot like Paul Steensman in the pictures on the screen. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear that. So if there's no more questions, I really appreciate your time today. If there's anything else that I can do to help mess up the rest of your evening, please <laughs> let me know. And don't forget, I'll be looking for those emails and we'll get you started. All right. Thank you so much.